China is the world's largest coal consumer, and Australia is the second largest exporter of coal after Indonesia. It exports both thermal coal for power generation and metallurgical coal for steel production. Since Anthony Albanese succeeded Scott Morrison as Australian Prime Minister in May 2022, China and Australia have sought to improve their diplomatic relations. The fact that the Chinese government has now effectively ended its ban on Australian coal could be seen as part of a move to improve relations between the two countries, but it is also clear that the Communist Party-led country is now in economic difficulties not seen in more than 30 years. Reuters reported that China's National Development and Reform Commission, NDRC, had held a meeting with China Datang Corp, China Huanong Group, China Energy Investment Corporation, and China Baowu Steel Group Corp on February 3, 2023 to discuss resuming imports of Australian coal. These four state-owned enterprises will be allowed to buy Australian coal, but only for their own use. Since then, customs officials in Guangdong province in southern China have been notified by the local government that they can clear customs for Australian coal shipments. In the past, Chinese purchases accounted for about a quarter of Australia's coal exports. For Australia, the trade was once the most lucrative coal trade in the world. According to 2019 figures, before the Australia-China trade dispute, Chinese coal purchases generated 13 billion US dollars in revenue for the Australian economy. In 2020, Chinese purchases were cut off almost overnight. So are Australian mining companies excited by the news of lifting the ban? Not really. Australian media news.com.au reported that ASX-listed mining company New Hope Corporation confirmed that they had been approached by several Chinese buyers in the past month. A spokesman for New Hope said that inquiries from Chinese buyers have increased significantly, but the group's current production capacity has been fully contracted by existing customers, including long-term international customers in Taiwan and Japan. In a cynical tone, the report said that Australian miners are unwilling to supply coal to China at a time of embarrassment for the country because their coal is being shipped elsewhere, including to China's enemy, Taiwan. The newspaper also used the subheading that China was officially crawling back to buy coal from Australian companies, mocking China for buying Australian coal again after years of bullying the Australian economy. Previously, the CCP imposed bans or high tariffs on a range of Australian products, including coal, wine, beef, barley, and even lobster. As a result of the Morrison government's call for an investigation into the origins of COVID-19, for the past two years, Australian coal exports have been quietly blacklisted by the CCP. That is, China has never officially announced a ban on the import of Australian coal, but Chinese imports of Australian coal fell by 85% in 2021. Later, the Morrison government reached a new security agreement, AUKUS, with the US and UK aimed at countering Chinese military power. The most high-profile aspect of the AUKUS partnership is that the UK and US will help Australia build at least eight nuclear-powered submarines. The US had previously shared nuclear propulsion technology only with the UK, making Australia the second country that will have US nuclear submarine technology. This means that the former Indo-Pacific strategy between the US and its allies has been fully upgraded with Australia, located at the southern tip of the Pacific Ocean and between the US and China, becoming the strategic hub. The move has also infuriated the Chinese government and import restrictions on those Australian products remained in place. But since Australia's Labour Party won the election, relations between the two countries have begun to thaw. Against a backdrop of diminishing international friends, Australia has become the latest major country to receive an official expression of goodwill from China. China and Australia are both important countries in the Asia-Pacific region and their economies are highly complementary. The healthy and stable development of China-Australia relations is in line with the fundamental interests of the two peoples and they are also conducive to promoting peace stability and prosperity in the Asia-Pacific region and the world. China is willing to work with Australia to further implement the important consensus of the Bali meeting between the two leaders and the outcomes of the China-Australia diplomatic and strategic dialogue.
based on the principles of mutual respect, mutual benefit, and win-win situation, and seeking common ground while reserving differences, the two countries should initiate and resume dialogue and communication in all fields, expand cooperation, manage differences, promote the rebuilding of mutual trust between the two countries, and put bilateral relations back on the right track. The CCP's official statement on lifting the ban on Australian coal has been ridiculed by some Chinese netizens. They describe it as another win for the CCP. This statement comes from a well-known remark by an expert in the Chinese bureaucracy. A win-win is when China wins twice. <laughs> this is because Chinese people and companies have already experienced the pain of the lack of Australian coal. As we previously analyzed in a series of episodes, the Chinese economy has been hammered by the Communist Party's ban on Australian coal. More than two-thirds of China's electricity comes from coal-fired power plants. Just a few months ago, China experienced several months of rotating blackouts in mid-2022 because it was unable to purchase good quality and affordable Australian coal. In 2021, Indonesian and Russian coal exports to China increased by 39% and 44% respectively. In the same year, U.S. coal exports to China were more than seven times higher than in 2020. In September 2021, it was reported that Chinese buyers were paying 595 Australian dollars per ton for Australian coal through middlemen, more than twice the price at which Australian mines were selling. The Australian Strategic Policy Institute, ASPI, estimates that Chinese buyers paid high prices for Australian coal through third parties, costing China 2 billion US dollars or 2.9 billion Australian dollars per week. Some analysts believe that if approved, China's coastal steel mills may once again look for high-quality Australian coal, which would push U.S. supply back to its original market. If so, China's steel mills would again experience the disruptions and costs associated with the two-year government ban that saw them adjust their facilities that were customized for Australian coal. And now they would have to adjust them again in the face of a sluggish economy. Many residents in northern China have spent unusually cold winters because of the lack of coal and natural gas. This is a scene in northeast China in January of this year. Ice formed on the ceiling in the stairwell of a residential building. Here in northwest China, residents were trying to solve their water problem by burning firewood in the area where the water pipes are laid. The firewood was burned for an hour, but the pipes didn't thaw. For Australian exporters, things are different now. After being shut out by the CCP, Australian miners have struggled to piece together a new supply chain and form new customer relationships, including links to India. Australian miners are understandably cautious about giving up the solid relationships they have built up compared to the risky Chinese communist market. With the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the sanctions imposed on Russian coal by Europe, European countries have sought new supplies, including from Australia. Australian coal prices have spiked and these changes have changed the landscape of international coal trade. The Wall Street Journal reported that the CEO of Queensland Resources Council and Industry Association said rising exports over the past two years to India and other Asian countries have cemented relationships. Coal is often sold under long-term contracts. Queensland is rich in coal resources. These alternative markets to China are now seen by Queensland coal exporters as stable, long-term customers for Queensland coal, he said. After his re-election at the 20th National Congress in October 2022, Communist Party leader Xi Jinping swiftly lifted nearly three years of stringent epidemic control measures while trying to ease tensions with the United States. It is clear that the Xi Jinping administration is trying hard to refocus on the economy. To get China off the low growth mark of the epidemic, it will likely need more energy and commodities. The CCP's coal ban on Australia has reshaped the energy market, and now it'll be too difficult to return to its original form. Since the US-China trade war began in 2016, the international environment facing the Communist Party has been changing rapidly. 
For three years, the communist government has almost completely shut down China, isolating the world's second largest economy from the rest of the world and disrupting the world's supply chains. This has gradually opened the world's eyes to the particular set of values, mindsets, and behaviors of the Communist Party's Red Regime. All of these have led companies from all over the world to ask the question, is China or the CCP a reliable trading partner? What are the unpredictable risks of dealing with the CCP? Since the Labor Party won the election in 2022, the top brass of the CCP has sent congratulatory telegrams signaling a thaw in relations between China and Australia. This comes as Australia's Albanese government has been much more moderate in its approach to the CCP than its predecessor Morrison. However, it is a question mark whether the future of China-Australia relations will really move in a positive direction. After all, there are too many incompatible aspects of the two social systems. Just as more interaction between the two countries is taking place, an accident has occurred. On February 9th, News Corp Australia revealed that at least 913 walkie-talkies, electronic access control systems, and video equipment developed by Chinese companies Hikvision and Dahua had been installed in 250 government offices. These Chinese companies have ties to the CCP. On the same day, the Australian Defence Minister ordered the removal of Chinese-made surveillance equipment from the Defence Department and military sites. Well, look, I think there, this is an issue, um, and uh, we, uh, for, in respect of what's in the newspapers today, we're doing an assessment of, of all uh, the um, technology for, for surveillance within the defence uh, estate, um, and where those um, particular cameras are found, they're going to be removed. So, it, it, you know, there is an issue here, and we're going to deal with it. Um, it, it How it, significant it, is the issue? Oh, I, I don't think it's. I don't think we should overstate it, but I think it is right to be. Uh, doing the assessment and making sure that we 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 deal with it, and that's what we're going to do. Um, I mean, it's a significant thing that's been brought to our attention, and, and we're going to fix it. It's obviously been there, I might say, for some time, and, and predates us coming into office. Um, but that said, it's important that we we go through this exercise and make sure that our facilities are completely secure. Well, the concern is that these are Chinese manufactured cameras, and there's data being collected, which is going back to the Chinese state. We still don't know fully if that's the case. We haven't seen any technical assessment or uh, attributes of the cameras to actually know if that's the place. Australia PM Albanese was unconcerned about how the Chinese government might react to the move. He said, we act in accordance with Australia's national interest. We do so transparently, and that's what we will continue to do. Later, the Premier of South Australia also ordered a review of the surveillance system in the state government building. Previously, Australia's handling of surveillance equipment coming from the CCP hasn't received this much public attention. In 2018, the Australian Air Force Base, RAAF Base, in Edinburgh, north of Adelaide, stopped using CCTV equipment made by Hikvision. In January 2020, South Australian Health also announced the removal of all CCTV cameras manufactured by Hikvision. And in February 2023, the Australian War Memorial in the Australian Capital Territory confirmed that it was removing 11 units of equipment manufactured by Hikvision. The United States and the United Kingdom took action in November 2022 to ban or restrict the installation of equipment made by the two companies because they are partly owned by the CCP. Surely, the Chinese diplomats expressed their displeasure. The Chinese government has always encouraged Chinese enterprises to carry out foreign investment and cooperation in accordance with market principles and international rules and on the basis of compliance with local laws. We oppose any misguided approach that generalizes the concept of national security and abuses state power to discriminate against Chinese enterprises. We hope that Australia will provide a fair, just and non-discriminatory environment for the normal operation of Chinese enterprises and do more things that are conducive to mutual trust and cooperation between the two sides. These events, intertwined with the emergence of Chinese spy balloons in U.S. airspace, have brought to light the massive global surveillance program of the Chinese Communist military. These seemingly accidental events show that the sinister agenda the CCP has planted in all corners of the world over the past few decades is now coming to light at a breakneck pace. This process seems to be beyond the control of the will of man. 
Predictably, the ban on Australian coal has been lifted, but Australia will never be the same again. Foreign interference is not hypothetical. It is not merely something that lies in our future. It is happening today, and we need to do more to tackle it today. The University of Sydney said that due to Australian government intelligence advice, they were aware the security threats Australia faces were real and increasingly sophisticated. And during the Senate inquiry, universities repeatedly pointed out their commitment to countering foreign interference and the dramatic increase in their level of awareness since regular engagement with government agencies like ASIO.